Hey, funny! What's up? It's a culture detective here investigating your favorite movies, and today I'm going to be doing a movie review on Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. So, yeah, right now as I'm recording this, it's January 14th, but when you're watching it, it's probably January 20th or something like that. Uh, so, um, yeah, YouTube. I love YouTube. So yeah, Glass Onion is the new Ryan Johnson movie. It came out a couple months ago and I didn't watch it until its Netflix release. And uh, I watched it in time so that I could do my um, best movies of the year list. Like after the Whale review, I actually watched four more movies because I thought these four movies and, and by watch four more movies, I actually watch a lot more than that. But I'm just saying that there are, I predicted that there would be four movies that would end up in my list and I watched all four of them and those four movies also ended up on my list. And these four movies are Bones and All, The Fablemans, Triangle of Sadness and Glass Onion and Glass Onion being the last one I finished the day before I did my best movies list. But yeah, um, Glass Onion is the second movie in the Knives Out trilogy by Ryan Johnson. A few years ago, I think in 2019, Ryan Johnson released Knives Out, which is a pretty fun, neat little murder mystery movie that I thought was quite enjoyable. I didn't think it was a masterpiece or anything, but it was fun. It was fun, it's enjoyable, I had a good time, and it's cool, it's whatever. And turns out Glass Onion came out and it is bigger and better and more ambitious. Glass Onion is two and a half hours long, it has a huge cast ensemble, much like Knives Out, and um, it's more ambitious, more crazy sets, more crazy CGI, more plot points, more complicated, and it actually delivered. So I'm not going to spoil anything about this movie because the premise itself is also kind of a spoiler, but essentially we have a murder mystery that takes place on a remote island involving a millionaire, a millionaire, gazillionaire, billionaire, gazillionaire, uh, played by Edward Norton and uh, all the people who are uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, the fellowship of this millionaire you know the people under this millionaire sort of secretly working for this millionaire or, or not really working for this millionaire but like you know grabbing onto onto his tip uh, Catherine Hahn as this politician Leslie Odom Jr. as a scientist we have uh, uh, freaking uh, Drax. Oh, I forgot his name. Frick. Uh, what? <coughs> I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Um, he's this Twitch streamer. So there, there's a group of people. And so a murder mystery happened. And Benoit Blanc, played by Daniel Craig, is there to solve the mystery. First of all, Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc is uh, absolutely Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista, I remember it now. So, uh, and also uh, Kate Hudson as this uh, social media influencer who's very, like, blonde and kind of dumb and kind of annoying and says, and, and doesn't know what sweatshop means. She thought sweatshops are shops that make sweatpants. Um, <coughs> that's one of the jokes in the movie. But anyways, first of all, Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc is freaking amazing. Again, like I said in the Knives Out review, Daniel Craig did surprisingly well. He has a comedic side to him that I think is finally explored and it's pretty damn great. Benoit Blanc is also a really entertaining movie protagonist. Usually murder mystery protagonists are, you know, maybe stoic, maybe hard-boiled, you know, hard-boiled detective, something like that. But Daniel Craig's character is so, like, uh, cartoonish, so animated with the Southern Atlantic drawl. It's just so fun seeing him. And he's not used to being in rich people environments. So throughout the whole movie, Benoit Blanc is like a fish out of water. So that's really funny. I like the costumes and the set designs as well. They're really fun, bright, vibrant, colorful, really adds onto the personality of this movie. I think the mystery itself is also interesting 
I think the mystery in Glass Onion is even more interesting than the original Knives Out. I like how simple the original Knives Out is. I like the simplicity of it, but this one is more ambitious and I actually like this one a little bit more because it's a little more complicated. Now, there are a couple of things that, of course, um, are not that great in this movie. I think there are several plot holes in the story that uh, if you're really trying to nitpick the movie and figure out every single character's relationships and the whole timeline and everything, of course, there are bound to be plot holes here and there, but that's totally fine because if you're a casual enjoyer in this movie, which I think is something you're supposed to do, I don't think Ryan Johnson made Glass Onion thinking that it's going to be a high concept 1000 IQ sort of uh, masterpiece. I think this movie is made very much for the purpose of entertainment and that's it. And yeah, it just works. It's entertaining. So yeah, there are plot holes. There are moments that are kind of illogical, but uh, who freaking cares? It's so much fun. And then another thing is there's the comedy elements of the movie. There are several moments in the movie that I actually find quite funny. And of course, um, it's a pandemic movie. It's a movie that takes place circa 2020, 2021. And it has uh, COVID in it. You know, in the beginning of the movie, there are a lot of, ooh, no, no touching. Ooh, there's COVID. Oh, and uh, the first scene uh, where Benoit Blanc shows up, he's playing Among Us. He's playing Among Us. Oh, my God. Imposter. The imposter is sus. Oh, my God. And then uh, uh, Dave Bautista's character is a Twitch streamer. Wow, Twitch, that's crazy. And I know it's moments like this that kind of cheapen the movie a little bit. Like, okay, now Ryan Johnson is trying to relate to Gen Zers and it's trying to be trendy. It's trying to be caught up with the times and all that shit. It's kind of like Marvel humor almost. But, but these throwaway jokes don't ruin the comedy for me at all actually first of all they're only a little bit so the among us scene it's just that one scene that's it it doesn't happen again the covid stuff it happened for a few scenes in the beginning and then again for the rest of the movie it doesn't happen again um but um yeah second of all i do admire at least that ryan johnson clearly wanted to you know relate to the gen zers and relate to the modern times and in a way he successfully does so especially with things like the janus cup the janus films cup the mug that's literally it's not just in the background for no reason it's literally in the movie and it doesn't even feel like product placement it just feels like ryan johnson likes janus films and that mug becomes one of the important props in the movie and um again like with the google alerts and all that stuff this is definitely not a product placement for google google does not need product placement okay everyone and their moms and their grandmas in the world are using google google does not need product placement it is solely in the script just for a laugh in my opinion and i think that's totally fine there are even moments in the movie that reminds me of something else like the I'm not going to spoil much, but the hot sauce pretending to be blood, that's probably a parasite reference. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. The ending explosion scene could be a Breaking Bad reference. Maybe, maybe not. And the hot sauce touching the eyes, it's totally, definitely a Sean Evans Hot Ones reference. And you cannot convince me otherwise. You know, the, uh, oh, careful around the eyes, careful around the eyes, a rookie mistake. Uh, that's definitely from Hot Ones. But um, yeah, jokes aside, it is a fun movie. I don't mind the, the humor in this movie at all. I don't think it, it, it's, it ruins the movie. It doesn't ruin the drama because this movie isn't even that freaking dramatic. And also, some people complain, especially Ben Shapiro, complain that there are too many coincidences in the movie. But the whole coincidence thing in the movie, which I'm not going to spoil, by the way, it doesn't ruin the movie at all. It actually complicates the movie. It doesn't solve the mystery. It's a good coincidence. It's a well-written coincidence. So yeah, it's two and a half hours long, but it flew by. I enjoyed it. And 
I'm giving Glass Onion an 8 out of 10. Decent 8. So, have you watched Glass Onion? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.